song that is? That's called Wonderful Is Your Name. Let's swing. Let's swing it. <laughs> That's just so wrong. Just so wrong. Oh, please. Pick it up a little. Oh. No more room for guns and war Cost me a lifetime Just to gain this life before They say streets of hope Can you imagine a place Where life will never end Man, one will ever grow old Come on, my brother Come with me
Well, good morning, brothers and sisters. Grace and peace be to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the true destiny Christian community where we uh, teach Christ, we touch communities, and we transform culture by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, for those of you who may not know me, my name is Dr. John Paul McGee. I'm blessed to be the community leader of this awesome gathering of persons of believers uh, who come together weekly for times of worship, fellowship, instruction, impartation, uh, and prayer. And we also come together intermittently in person for times of service and uh, times of in-person worship and fellowship. And I'm grateful this morning that the Lord has brought us together yet again on another Maundy Thursday. Uh, so I want us to come on in this morning. Uh, what a time we had in Bible study last evening as we uh, talked about self-reflection. Uh, first lesson this week dealt with uh, willful sacrifice. And now uh, we have dug in, into self-reflection as we journey uh, with Jesus toward the cross. Uh, as tomorrow we will acknowledge and honor God for uh, the sacrifice of Jesus on Calvary's cross. And so uh, I am so grateful uh, to the Lord uh, for the blood. I'm grateful to be saved. I'm grateful uh, that I am blood bought, blood washed, blood redeemed. Glory to God. It is not cannibalistic. It is not unrealistic. Nothing but the blood of Jesus could wash away our sins. And uh, I'm so grateful that you are here as we seek to continue to honor the Lord uh, during this Passion Week, during this Holy Week season. So come on in, uh, beloved Come on in this morning as we seek uh, to go even further in reflection and even further in prayer. I'm going to ask this morning that you would like the broadcast. I'm going to ask that you would share it. I'm going to ask uh, this morning that you would tag at least 24 persons in your personal friend networks to join us as we go deeper in God. And we ask the Lord for the transforming power of the Holy Spirit uh, to continue to change us, to continue to mold us into what God would have us to be in this hour. So we are liking, we are sharing, and we are tagging this morning. Um, I'm grateful this morning to share with you uh, early this morning as I am headed to New Haven, Connecticut for the remainder of today uh, to teach at the Yale University Institute of Sacred Music and Black Church Studies. Uh, what a blessing it is to share uh, in uh, that endeavor. But as I always tell you, um, this is priority for me to make sure that we come together uh, consistently. But I want us to make sure that we also grow and that we expand. And I need your help in doing that. The only way we can do that is through grassroots uh, endeavors and grassroots participation. Those of you that are committed uh, to this time, if you would help us to share the news. Uh, not to share the news of a preacher, not to share the news of a community, but to share the news of a Christ and to share the news of a people uh, that are praying and that are gathering in his name. And so we are blessed uh, to uh, be here this uh, morning. And so come on in this morning. Come on in as we go further in God. It's good to see you. Not going to do a long uh, roll call this morning, uh, but we are grateful uh, to God to see each and every one of you in this place uh, this morning, uh, this morning. And so I want us this morning to uh, travel uh, briefly, uh, but very soberly uh, to the gospel according to John. Uh, the gospel according to John chapter number 13 uh, calls our prayerful attention this morning. John uh, chapter number uh, 13, and we're going to begin reading um, at verse number 12, at verse number 12, John chapter number 13. Uh, this is a Holy Week narrative uh, that we are looking at. This is a Maundy Thursday narrative that we are considering uh, here. Um, and actually, I'm going to begin reading uh, because it's good to read the Bible. It's good to read the story. Um, you know, there's a lot of preaching going on this week, and uh, I'll, I'll jump on the soapbox for 10 seconds. Um, 
a lot of preaching going on this week, and there are a lot of preachers uh, who are going to try to cleverly uh, tell a story that does not need our um, cleverness. It doesn't require our uh, homiletical ingenuity and innovation. Uh, this story, uh, this narrative, this history, uh, this this account, this gospel stands on its own. And so uh, my advice to uh, younger preachers, I can say that now because I've been preaching for 25 years, is to preach this gospel simple, full and free and to tell the story, uh, to, to tell this gospel story. Even the hymn writer says, I heard an old story about a savior that's come from glory, right? The hymns tell the story and they bring the narrative uh, to light uh, with great uh, poetic uh, essence, but also in addition to the poetic essence, it is uh, definitely remaining true uh, and to the transparent and authentic reality of the gospel. John chapter number 13 says, before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and to return to his father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never, ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord, not just my feet. And Jesus replied, a person who is bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. And this is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. And after washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Uh, I, I, if I had to, to title this, it would be, it's time to get messy or it's time to get dirty. It, it's, it's time to get messy or it's time to get dirty. One of Jesus's final acts uh, with his disciples is to cleanse their feet. Now, um, it, it, it's very interesting that um, the, who, he who would be the savior of the world uh, before he goes uh, to the Garden of Gethsemane, before he's arrested, uh, before he goes before Pontius Pilate, before uh, he is walked from judgment hall to judgment hall, before he is hung on a wooden tree, his last act with his disciples is fellowship, food, and foot washing. Food, fellowship, and foot washing it comprises Jesus' last uh, act of true engagement and, and interaction with 
uh, those whom would become minus one, the apostles of the Lord's church. He sits them down, they have fellowship, they have supper. And once they have fellowship and supper, after he has given them an explanation of the wine and the bread and how that would signify and symbolize his, his blood and his body, Bible declares for us in John chapter number 13 that he gets up, takes the towel from off of his waist and goes from disciple to disciple washing their feet. Very interesting, uh, very, very, uh, very humbling uh, for someone of Jesus's great magnitude uh, to become such a servant in that moment that he would descend to the lowest part of another man's body to wash it with the towel that he was wearing around his waist. I think it's really important for us to paint the picture, this messy, dirty picture. In, in, in this time, there, there were no nail salons, there were no nail spas, there were no nail files, there were no uh, cuticle uh, files, there, there, there was no cuticle oil. Uh, feet were most likely uh, very, uh, in, in, in very, dire shape because they walked everywhere. Think about this, all over Galilee, other parts of Palestine and Samaria, the disciples had been following Jesus on foot. And although it was customary uh, for the feet to be washed as uh, they would enter into common space or enter into the home, um, that was not a full washing, right? It was just enough to make sure that they were not carrying uh, the dirt from the outside in abundance into an inside space. It's very uh, uh, interesting to note that this practice continues even to this day in certain cultures where persons are invited to take off their shoes before they enter into common space. This happens in Hawaiian culture. I lived there, many of you are aware, uh, I lived in Hawaii for about uh, six months teaching there. And one of the things that they taught us was to uh, leave the lava out and to bring the love in, right? So lava uh, causes lava rock, right? And lava rock is black. And most of the rock in the area of the big island where I was staying is black and it's very uh, rocky, uh, kind of very, uh, the, the, the terrain is extremely rough. And so they say when you're coming into uh, someone's home, or when you're coming into any type of public common space uh, that is residential, it is best practice that you take off your shoes. And that practice goes all the way back uh, even to Exodus. If you recall God's conversation with Moses at the burning bush, God says to Moses there when Moses sees the bush burning and not consumed and a ram caught in the thicket of the bush, uh, the Lord tells Moses to put off your shoes, take off your shoes for the place that you are now standing is holy ground. And so the, the sandals of the disciples had already been removed. Uh, their feet had already been ceremonially cleansed and they had gone through a preliminary cleansing. But as an act of humility, Jesus gets down and dirty. Jesus gets down and dirty, takes off uh, the towel from his waist, grabs a basin of water and begins to wash his disciples' feet. This was not a ceremonial cleansing. This was an act of, of, of humility. He was getting all in the crevices and the cracks. And, and, and cleansing and washing their feet. And so Peter asked the question in John chapter number 13, Lord, why are you doing this? Why, why are you washing my feet? I can't let you do this. Peter knows. Uh, Peter, I'm sure, is aware of the fact that not only are his feet dirty, but there's still some dirt in his heart, some dirt in his mind and dirt in his soul. And we're going to see that come to bear in the Lucan gospel account. In the Lucan gospel account, Jesus tells those who are gathered at the dinner, 
He says, one of you is going to betray me. That was Judas. But Judas doesn't speak up at the table. But Peter does. And Peter is the one that Jesus announces in the gospel according to Luke as the one that is going to deny him. It says, before the rooster crows three times in the morning, somebody is going to deny me. And Peter did it three times and cursed in doing so, denied that he even had connection and relationship. And I, I knew, I, I, I have a sneaky suspicion that Peter was aware of that duplicitous tendency within him to play to both sides of the fence when necessary for the sake of self-preservation. And so knowing that tendency and perhaps uh, discerning uh, the reality that at some point his faith would be tested, his convictions and his commitment to the gospel would be tested. He tells Jesus, no, 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 I can't. I can't let you humble yourself like that to me. I can't let you do that. And Jesus says, you'll understand what I'm doing later, but I have to do this. And Peter says, no, 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 you, you can't wash my feet. And then uh, he, Jesus says, I, I, I'm going to wash your feet. And then Peter says, well, don't just wash my feet, then wash me all over. So wash my hands, wash my head. He says, I, I, if you're going to cleanse me, cleanse me all the way. But then Jesus says something very critical here. He says, I've already cleansed all of you. He says, I've, I've already, he says, those who have, uh, those who have already had their head and, 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 and every, and their hands cleansed don't need to have that done again. He says a person that's been bathed all over does not need to have uh, anything washed except their feet. So that's the only thing that they need to have washed when they've been completely cleansed. Do you notice here, he is prophetically speaking of the reality of his blood and what it's going to do for all those at the table, here it is, that have made themselves available. He says, I'm willing to get down and dirty with you in your journey, in your pathway, wherever you walk, I'm availing myself to that says, I, I'm availing myself to the fact that you're going to walk in some spaces that you don't belong in and that you shouldn't go in. But but I'm, I'm washing your feet, I'm preparing you uh, for your journey. I've realized that, that you're going to, to, to walk into some relationships that are not healthy, walk into some connections uh, that are misaligned. You're going to walk into spaces and not always properly represent me with your behavior. That's why I'm washing your feet. But please know, Jesus would say, I've already bathed you all over. So he says, I'm washing your feet as an example for you in your interactions with the rest of the world. He says, this, this, this act is to show you Peter and disciples, the level of humility that you ought to display in your relationships and engagement with other brothers and sisters in Christ, that you ought always be willing to get down and dirty for the cause of Christ. So that's why I'm doing this. Let's look at the text again. He says, you call me teacher and Lord, and you are right because that's what I am. Verse 14, and since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, here it is, you ought to wash each other's feet. You, you ought to take this example and live it out. Get, get, get down with your brothers and sisters and, and, and humble yourself. Humble yourself in forgiveness. Humble yourself in relationship and service one to another in the same way that I've done it because no one is greater than me. I am the teacher. I am the rabbi. I am the Lord. I am the master. But I showed you what true love, service, and humility looks like, not just by serving you uh, the Passover meal, but I showed you what it looks like by getting down in in, in the reality of your journey with you. Hmm? So I, I've shown you that. And now I'm inviting you to get down in the journey with your other brothers and sisters to the point of humility, to the point of self-sacrifice, to the point of being self-effacing without being self-preserving, without being self-consumed, 
to serve others. That's what that hymn of the church says, to serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. Oh, may it all my powers engage to do the master's will. He said, I've called you to be who I've been to you in the lives of other people. Can, can, you, can you get messy and dirty? And I'm not talking about messy in a very colloquial sense uh, where people are always involved in stuff that they have no business, always got something to say and comment about everything, always know what's going on in every single situation. No, no, no. He says, are you willing to sacrifice in your relationships and to humble yourself with your brothers and sisters and avail yourself, here it is, to their feet, to their journey. Oh, this is tough because availing yourself to, your, to, the, to the journey of others could oftentimes be dangerous and it could all, oftentimes uh, be uh, turbulent and, and bring trouble to your own life. But can you humble yourself to assist your brothers and sisters in their journey and to serve them in their journey? This is the example that Jesus leaves for us and leads for us in Monday Thursday. That's why oftentimes on Monday Thursday, people have foot washing services. I remember the first time I had a foot washing service at the New Friendship Baptist Church in Baltimore, Maryland. Pastor Jason Clark uh, brought, introduced us to foot washing. We had, we had shouted, we had danced and spoken in tongues at New Friendship for decades, but we had never done foot washing, at least as long as I had lived. And I thought it was just the nastiest thing. And as uh, I was, I had my bucket and I'll never forget God, uh, God bless her. Uh, she was uh, next to me, Reverend Cynthia Brooks. And as they the people would come and they didn't take their stockings off, the dye from the stockings was getting in the water. The water was dirty and black. And I all after each person, I would just say, Lord, have mercy. After a while, here it is. I stopped looking up to see whose feet it was. Because in that moment, it was my call to be a servant. In that moment, it was my call to be a walking example of the love and the servanthood and the service of Christ to humanity. Didn't matter who speak they were. Didn't matter if it was a person I didn't know in the church. Didn't matter if it was a person who I was at odds with or had offense with in the church. And that day I saw so much reconciliation. I saw people after that service, speak to each other that had not spoken to each other in decades. And people reconcile in relationships because of the act of humility. After we got, after we, the ministers, got finished washing the feet of the uh, congregation, then there were members of the congregation who started to wash each other's feet. And as messy and as dirty as that water was, it was a beautiful moment that I will carry with me uh, till the Lord calls me home. A moment where I saw true reconciliation, restoration, love, and forgiveness at work. But it only came to bear because people were willing to humble themselves. So Father, we humble ourselves before you this morning in prayer. And we ask, as we did last night, that you would search us and know us, try our hearts, know our thoughts. See, oh God, if there be any arrogant, any proud way in us and lead us into the way of everlasting life. Lead us to the point where we self-correct. Father, forgive us for being proud. Forgive us uh, for holding ourselves in greater esteem than we should. You said in your word through the words of Paul for us to not look at our own interests, but to look at the interests and after the interests of others. Forgive us, O oh God. We repent for being self-preservationists. And we ask right now in the name of the name of the Lord Jesus, that you would enlighten us and illumine our minds to the areas in which you've called us to be available in service to our brothers and sisters, to be available in love to our brothers and sisters, to be available in help to our brothers and sisters in Christian community. Oh God, forgive us for being persons who hold grudges when you've called us to be persons uh, of love. You've called us to be persons of forgiveness when you've called us to be persons of openness and transparency. So Father, we open our hearts. 
We open our hearts as servants to our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. And Father, as you left us the example, help us to live in that perpetual state of humility. Father, I recognize in our humanity that meekness is not natural to us, that placing our strength under submission is not natural uh, to us. But you said in your word through the apostle James, that if we submit to you and we resist the devil, that the devil will flee from us. Thank you, Lord, for your example. Thank you, thank you for your suffering. Thank you for thinking of us, yes, Lord, and going to the cross without hesitation and without reservation, though it cost you your life, and though the pain was agonizing, and though the trauma was unbearable, you did it just for us. Thank you for leaving us with an example that calls us to a higher level of accountability. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Accountability and responsibility to deny ourselves, to take up our crosses and follow you. And so, Lord, as we engage in willful sacrifice, as we spend time in self-reflection today, yet again, we reflect on your sacrifice. We reflect on the reality of this account, that this is not an imaginary uh, story. This is not a fictional novel, that this is the reality of our faith. This is uh, the, the core of what we believe, that you suffered, bled, and died so that you could save and redeem us from the penalty of hell and from the condemnation of the dark world. You did it and you, oh God, won the victory over death, hell, and the grave through your crucifixion and resurrection. So Father, we thank you that we also will win victory as we submit to the crosses that we must bear daily. Thank you that our crosses will never be able to compare uh, to what you uh, bore for us, for what you endured for us. But Lord, help us to whatever level our crosses cause us issues and pain, and whatever level that our crosses that you've called us to bear cause us to feel at times like we are dying. I pray that you would help us to understand that as we crucify the deeds of our mortal flesh, that we give life and we rise to life anew in you. Yes, Lord. We thank you that we are crucified with you, yet we, uh, yet we live, yet it is not I, yet it is not us, but it is you who are living in us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that since by one came death, but by one also came the resurrection of the dead. And we thank you for Jesus this Sunday. We thank you for Jesus this morning. We honor you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I know y'all didn't want to hear this this morning, but get down and get get messy and dirty. That that's 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 the true essence of foot washing. It is not sanitary. It it it, it is after, in the way that it would happen in the Palestine. It is not a sanitary thing. But Jesus showed them that uh, the gospel and a true gospel led lifestyle is not sanitized. It requires sacrifice and it requires us uh, to get down and messy and dirty in the lives of, of, of our brothers and sisters as we see Jesus doing throughout his ministry. And so I encourage you this morning to live in that same space of humility. If this was your first time with us, won't you please signify that by saying first time in the chat. For those of you that's your first time, I welcome you and I thank God for you being here. I can't spend time this morning calling every name, but the persons who are part of our community that see your name there as you put it there because it's your first time are also going to greet you this morning in this time because I've got to run and catch this train. So if it's your first time, right first time in the chat. All right. And for those of you that have yet to connect with us, I invite you this morning uh, to connect with us via text. Text the word connect. Uh, we have much information to share with you and we're grateful uh, for those of you who gather with us regularly uh, and, and you are connected to us as well in the medium of text so that we can reach you. I would love to be in connection with you and we can actually receive text messages so you can send us messages as well when you want us to be aware of a prayer request or something that you have going on in your life. Text the word connect 
to 386-222-1070. Remember, this week, we are sowing a generational seed, a seed of generations, a seed of $40. And so we've not asked for $40 per gathering, but we are encouraging the saints to get $40 for the week. And this is our final gathering for this week week because when we gather on Sunday, it will be on Resurrection Sunday, which is the first day, right? Which is, it's the third day morning, but it is the first day of the week. And so it starts a new season. It's Easter time. Holy week is over after tomorrow, after Good Friday. There's Holy Saturday. And then we go into the celebration of Easter and Resurrection. So this morning we're sowing this week we're sowing a seed of gener generation, that $40 seed. I invite all of you to join us there this morning. You can text giving to 386-222-1070. Again, that's giving to 386-222-1070. Or you can give PayPal. Uh, info at True Destiny Online is the means to give there via PayPal. All right. So we're giving Father every gift, give or tithe, tithe the seed and so is blessed in Jesus name. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. I want you to have an amazing day on purpose. I want you to keep uh, me in prayer tomorrow. Something very important going on uh, in uh, the work environment tomorrow. I need your prayers and your intercession. Uh, but uh, we know that the Lord will be glorified. All right. Can't speak of the specifics of it just yet, but just pray and know that all is well. All right. All is well. Seriously, we're uh, approaching some new opportunities. And so I need the saints praying uh, that the Lord's will would be done. All right. I love each and every one of you. There's nothing you can do about it. I look forward to seeing you Sunday morning as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Have an amazing day.